Praise God. Glad to have you here tonight. Really, I, I, it'll take too much time to meet all the visitors who are here. I'm just so thankful that you're here tonight. Appreciate Brother Tony coming back. Brother Jonathan over here from the Community Baptist Church. A lot of his folks are here. And other churches represented tonight, thank you so much for being with us. And Brother Douglas is here, one of our missionaries. We're glad to have him and his grandsons. They're going to sing for us later in the service, his two grandsons. Where are they at? Over here they are, okay, right behind Brother Tony here. And they're going to sing for us later uh, in the service. And so that'll be a real blessing. Now listen, we do have a nursery if you need it. It's, if you go down this door here, go down to the very end, you'll see a water fountain. Get your drink of water and then go in the nursery, okay? <laughs> and... Uh, now, the nurse is right to the left of it. If you need it, uh, you can. if your child becomes restless and needs to be taken out, you go down and steal the child. You can stay there uh, and leave it with the nursery workers, or you can come back in with it. And, of course, the restrooms are right there toward the end of the hall for the men and on the right-hand side of, uh, for the ladies, okay? I do hope that you'll take care of all of that while singing's going on, not while preaching's going on. Amen? And uh, I realize sometimes you may have to, but... Uh, uh, I hope that uh, you won't have to tonight. All right. Now, listen, we are we have taped all the messages from Sunday morning through last night. And uh, we have them with us. We, uh, and we'll be taping tonight's message also. And uh, time we get through tonight, Brother Randy is going to uh, crank up the duplicator back there. We can do about, about 10 in, in three minutes. And so have tonight's message ready if you want to get a, a set of them. Uh, Sunday morning, there's no place like home. Tremendous message. And then Sunday night, the danger of familiarity. What that, if you're not careful, what familiarity do to you and how to keep that from happening. Great message for church folks. And then uh, last night, uh, don't let your hill become a mountain. And, uh, and then tonight is when we preach on a subject about why everybody will get to go to heaven. And so we'll be looking forward to that tonight. So uh, if you are visitors, we want to get, if you interested, our CDs are three bucks a piece. And here's what we do with it. It's a dollar for the, C, the CD, and then uh, for the case it goes in, we take the extra dollar and put it in the missions. So we don't make any money off of it. And uh, so it's three dollars, and it'll be four all together, and three times four is what? Is it 12? It's still 12. Okay, you ask the government that, they wonder what it is. You know, three times four is all you got. <laughs> but uh, you'll see Randy back there, and if you write a check out, make it out to the church. And uh, our members, we would like for our guests to do that first, so we won't have to mail them to them. So if we run out, members, you can get yours on tomorrow night or Sunday. So let our guests go back there first night. And of course, Brother Field over here has got uh, all, a good many of his CDs on, on subjects, and he'll be saying something about that later. They're they're two dollars a piece, and uh, buy two. You buy two, you get three free. <laughs> oh my! And uh, but anyway. <laughs> All right. But anyway, uh, his his are three bucks, but the the case costs you five bucks. <laughs> All right. I'm telling you what, it's worth every dime of it to them. Honestly, it really is. And if by chance you do get us uh, something, there's a defect in it, I think he wouldn't mind you letting him know, but we're the same way. Okay, if you, sometimes you may get a bad CD, and, and we don't want to, you to have that. Just let us know. We'll make it good. All right. And I want to uh, thank uh, uh, Brother and Sister Bird and Brother and Sister Lyons for having us for a good meal today. Yes, well, I tell you what, that was good stuff. Catfish, too, fried catfish, homemade hush puppies, slaw, fresh tomatoes. Mm, fresh homemade uh, peach cobbler, iced tea, homemade slaw. Yeah, good, wasn't it? I said, they said, you want something to carry with you? I said, well, just fix me a little bit to carry home. Honestly, I carried that in a, in a garbage bag. <laughs> Peanuts, muscadines, food. I said, all I want was just a little bit. That's what we're preaching. we got to get rid of this food. <laughs> well, anyway, all right, it was a blessing. It sure was. All right, now. I think that's all the announcements. Uh, Brother Phil, you want to say something about your retreat later? Okay, all right. And uh, he's going to say something about a retreat. I hope you'll get to go uh, sometime, I think sometime next year. All right. Well, anyway, I've enjoyed the choir singing. And Brother Tom Harper's not here. He's our choir director. He's out of town. Uh, had, to, had to go out of town. And I talked to his wife. She said he's sleeping on a cot somewhere out somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, and, and so where? Oklahoma. Is that it? 
All right, my. And so, uh, Brother Brian here is filling in for him, doing a great job. Amen. So the choir is going to sing a couple of songs. Listen carefully. Let it speak to your heart. Give me a little bit more on this or four markers up here when they sing. How about that? You ready to meet him tonight? Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what I am. Praise God. Likewise. <laughs>
Amen. Let's stand up and shake about four or five hands and stay right where you are. Just turn around and say hello. Introduce yourself to your neighbor. Right there where you are. There you go. Speak to the neighbor. some folks to come in looking for a seat. If there's, say, three or four seats beside you, raise your hand. Anybody got three? A place for three or four? Right here? Right here. Raise your hand up, Kevin. Right there is a seat for a whole whole family. There you go. There you go. It's going to cost you five dollars to get that special seat, though. That's all right. Just let them in, Kevin, right through there. All right? That's good. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we don't look too jam-packed. Everybody got elbow room? Okay, that's good. That's good. Everybody took a bath today. <laughs> I can tell some of you didn't, but anyway. <laughs> uh, it might be me. I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. I tell you what. I've enjoyed uh, the meetings. Every, uh, it's not a revival. We didn't advertise it as a revival meeting. I'm glad we have a touch of it Amen. and have some special. God do something special for us. Amen. And uh, so that's what we want. We're just calling this special services each month. We've had a different preacher come in, and, and Brother Phil's our, pre our preacher for this month. And I sort of hate to see him leave, but he's going to be heading home tomorrow morning. And, uh, and I'm going to miss him. And I've enjoyed it. enjoyed being with him, his fellowship, his company. We've talked and, and laughed together and cried together and, and rejoiced together. And that's been such a blessing. If you're a visitor here, I'd like for you just to stand. We just want to have all the visitors just to stand, say for five, five, about five seconds. All right, members of Welch Creek, let's give them a big hand. Yeah. Thank you. You can be seated. We, we're glad you're here. Amen. And we welcome you here. All right. Well, where's the Douglas fellows at? They didn't, they're going to come. This is Brother Douglas' grandsons. They're going to come and sing a song for us. Come on, fellas. They didn't know this until they got here, so anyway. How are you fellas doing? Y'all be behaving yourself? Church is doing good in school? Make straight A's? <laughs> you is, you're not. No. Okay, okay. All right, sing a song for us. <clears throat> it's out of your hands. You've done all you can do. You've given God your problem. It's no longer up to you. You prayed the prayer of faith, and now you're standing on God's truth. While you're waiting for an answer, he's got a question for you. Is anything too hard for God? Who's got a problem beyond his power to solve? Are there situations he's not the master of? Is anything too hard for God? Only believe, trust his word, you'll see how his plans are now unfolding, forming perfectly. It's true how much he loves you. Just look at what he's done. Right. For all your questions, there's really only one. Yes, yes, yes. Is anything too hard for God? Who's 
who's got a problem beyond his power to solve? Are there situations he's not the master of? Is anything too hard for God? Is anything too hard for God? Amen. 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 Nothing's too hard for him. <laughs> I, where's Noah? Is he over there? He left and went. He wanted, He said, Papa, can I sing tonight? I said, yes, sir. He said, with the microphone? <laughs> but he's gone. He's not here. So I was going to let him sing for him. I ain't going to go get him. Somebody said, no, you don't want him in here. <laughs> so I'm telling you, he'll ask too many questions. Uh-huh. All right, well, uh, we are going to receive our offering for tonight for our visiting preacher. And uh, I don't know how much has come in. I think $35, $40 already has come in. <clears throat> and uh, that's, he's worth a whole lot more than that. I know that he's worth about 50 but, but <laughs> oh, my. But he's making fun of these salad bowls up here. These are not, these are offering plates. And uh, these are not salad bowls. These are offering plates. And <laughs> I told him, I said, maybe a salad, they'll hold a whole lot of lettuce. <laughs> All right, we are uh, thankful that he's come our way. And, and uh, I, I've tried over the years to teach our people to be good to preachers. And they've done that. They've done that. And I, I could stand and tell you, I could spend hours telling you, uh, though they don't know, preachers do tell me, so Brother Baker, you had... Somebody do this, somebody did this. I mean, extra, not, not just in the offer, but it's extra. And it always blesses my heart to know that we, we do have some people who uh, love God's men. And so they love Brother Phil. Hope you love him. And, uh, and you'll be good to, good to him tonight in the offering. Amen. We're going to sing a good song, and it's called, it's number 63. It's only two verses. And we'll receive tonight's offering for our visiting preacher. Let's stand up. Come on, brother. Number 63, let's stand up. looking at some of you, you don't look like you're looking forward to that day. I am, honestly. Yes, sir. I'm really looking forward to the day I get to see you. I'm, 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 I know heaven's going to be a wonderful place. I'm excited about seeing the Lord. Amen. What a day that'll be. Amen. Hey, sing it like you really want, want, want to see him. Amen. Amen. Sing that verse to There'll be no sorrow there, no more birth.
I'm ask uh, Pastor Jonathan Mixon from the Community Baptist Church to pray and ask God to bless the offering that we're about to receive. Brother Jonathan. Yes, God. Yes, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. Yes, God. Yes. Yes. Yes, God. Yes. Yes. Amen, amen. Pray a little bit slower. They got a lot more money. <laughs> yeah, they, just, they just throw in that plate. They sling across there. All right, Miss Baker's going to come sing for us. Where's she at? Of course, Tommy's got to make his way up here to play for her. Yeah. On the vice. I don't have any more. Mm -hmm. Close the dryer. Close the dryer. That's what I thought. Okay. I can go get you something. No, that's all right. Probably just missing there. Just missing. You snap to it? <laughs> That's right, yeah, sure. She loves that when I pop my fingers. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Jumps right to it every time. Took my 
Anyway, that's our church motto, Welch Creek Baptist Church, family of sinners saved by grace. Yeah. Not, a, not Hey, we once were sinners, but now we're saints of God. Amen. We're not live saintly, but in God's eyes we are. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm ready for preaching, aren't you? Amen. Amen. I've enjoyed every message, and Brother Phil will say to you, everything you preach this week, this church is needed. Thank you. Everything you preach. If nobody showed up but our folks, we have needed I'm yeah. saying we, we, we have needed everything you preached. Thank you, sir. And so I want to thank you for that. I'm glad you've minded God. <laughs> yes, I've tried. You've helped, you've helped me. You've helped our church. We're looking thank forward you. to hearing you preach tonight. Amen. Thank Brother you Phil so much, kid, Pastor. Listen carefully. Sit up straight. Get your Bibles out. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. I've been announcing all week a very strange subject. I'm preaching tonight on the subject, everybody gets to go to heaven. I think before you can understand the concept of that title, you must understand what the Bible says about heaven. According to the scripture, there are three heavens in the Bible. The first heaven in the Bible is what we call our atmosphere. It's the sky above your head. It's the atmosphere that surrounds the earth. It's the immediate. That's called the first heavens according to the scripture. Then we have what we call the second heaven. That is what is known as our galaxy. That's where all the planets are, the untold millions of stars. It's where the Milky Way. And now we have found out that beyond our galaxy are many, many other galaxies. And we have now found out that ours is the smallest of all that have been found. That's called the second heaven. Then what we, we have what we call the habitation of God, which is the third heaven. It was the apostle Paul that was caught up into the third heaven. That's where God is. And may I say to you, heaven is a long, long way from where you're sitting tonight. I preached many years ago with Dr. John Phillips, great commentary writer of our day. Dr. Phillips died 
several years ago, but we were together in a meeting, and I said, Dr. Phillips, how far is heaven, the footstool of God, from here? He said, Brother Kid, if you traveled at the speed of light, which is 187,000 miles a second, that's the speed of light, if you traveled 187,000 miles a second from where we're standing to God's throne would take three and a half years. That's how big the third heaven is. So I say to you that every human being that has ever lived, ever upon the face of this earth, will one day go to that third heaven. There's a lot of things you've probably heard from your pulpit, though men meant it for good. They really misrepresented the Bible. Let me illustrate a few. Have you ever heard anybody say, you can't go to heaven unless you've been saved? You ever heard anybody say that? I understand the concept of what they mean, but that's really not true because everybody is eventually going to heaven. Second of all, have you ever heard anybody say, if you die without Jesus, you'll never have a chance to call upon him again to save you. But that's not true. You will have another opportunity to call upon Jesus to save you after you die. The third thing, that you, some of you folks are looking really rough right now. I'm going to be honest. You, you, you folks are looking like, uh-huh, he's smoking pot again. Preacher gave me a urine test before church. I'm clean. Number three. Have you ever heard anybody say if you die without Jesus, you'll never, ever, ever see your loved ones again? Now, I know that's a fearful thing to think about that, but in reality, that's not true at all. You will see your loved ones again in heaven. Number four, I've heard people preach all of my Christian life that if you die without Jesus, you burn in hell forever and you never get out. You've probably heard that. I got saved the night a man preached on hell. But to tell you the truth, that's really not so. If you die without Jesus tonight, you're not going to go to hell and burn forever. None of that is in the Bible, though I understand the concept of what they're trying to say. The Bible is very clear without any hesitation that no matter what nationality, what age they lived or died, every human being on the face of this earth, no matter what religion they were or were not, everybody, gets to go to heaven when they die. Now, I want to prove that to you in the Bible. I want you to turn with me to Revelation chapter 20, and I want to begin reading about one of the greatest events where every human being in the world will be in heaven. You'll find it in Revelation chapter 20, and I'll begin reading with verse number 11. John said, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. The earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them in heaven. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. They were judged every man according to their works. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Everyone gets to go to heaven. For those of you that know anything about Scripture within its context, this is known as the great white throne judgment of God. There are four things about Revelation chapter 20 and you go into heaven that I want to show you from these verses in this closing night. Pastor, in my prayer room this evening, God assured me that there would be people in this auditorium that are not ready to meet God. 
And I pray if you don't know the saving grace of God, that you would allow this to be the greatest day of your life. Four truths about these verses that I want to leave you. Number one, I want to talk about the resurrection of the dead. You'll find him in these verses. John said that I saw the dead, in verse 11, small and great, stand before God. When he gives the implication of small and great, he's not referring to their physical size. He's referring to their standings upon earth. Whether they were a beggar or whether they were a billionaire, there was a day when every dead sinner will meet God in the third heaven on judgment day. The Bible said the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Now that takes on a new meaning to me as of late because when Osama bin Laden was killed, they threw a sorry carcass into the sea. And what God is showing us that when the human body, though it's thrown into the open salt waters and swells and erupts and disintegrates and is eaten by the turtles and the fish and the sharks and floats to the shore and is devoured by flesh-eating fowls, God said it doesn't matter what happens to the element of their body because I will call it all back together one day. He said death delivered up the dead which were in them, referring to those that are traditionally buried beneath the sod. There's a resurrection of the dead. God will pull every element of your physical body, whether it's buried in the ground, whether it's been cremated or whether it's been devoured by the elements of the open waters and sea. God said on this great day of judgment, I will command every cell and every vessel of that body to be put back in union again. And then in that resurrection, he said death and hell gave up the dead which were in them. People are not in hell in their bodies tonight. They're in hell in their souls only. And on this resurrection day, God said, I'm calling up every element of your body. I'm bringing your never dying soul out of the pit of hell. The heavens and the earth are going to flee to the corners of the galaxy. I'm going to whisk you up to the third heaven. Your body and your soul will be reunited in the midst of the air. You'll stand on resurrection day at the foot of the great white throne in the very body you're setting in tonight. Your soul will be relieved from the torments of the damned. Your body will be resurrected from the dust of the earth. There you'll stand in the midst of the air all alone before the King of kings and the Lord of lords the one who has eyes as a flame and fire and a voice as many thunders and hair as white as wool. It's called the day of judgment and God has now called every condemned lost sinner that has ever died Christless is now living again in their body in the third heaven before the throne of God. That's the resurrection of the dead. Number two, I want to talk about the reunion that's disturbing. Did you know since the beginning of man until the end of time, this is the only time in the history of God and humanity that everybody that has ever lived upon the face of the earth will be reunited. All the saved will be there and all the lost will be there. Every daddy, every mama, every son, every daughter, every grandparent, every aunt, every uncle, every cousin, every human being since Adam and Eve will be at this great day of judgment in God's habitation. 
In this reunion, it's disturbing because it's not what we're used to with family reunions. And because there's not going to be dinner on the ground. There's not going to be singing and dancing and music. For ladies and gentlemen, we're not there to enjoy family. But you are there to be judged by God. Now the Word of God declares us that the great white throne that God is seated upon is pure white. Why is the throne of God white on this day of judgment? There are two distinct reasons. First of all, to show the purity and the honesty of the judgment that's about to take place. White is a picture of cleanliness and purity. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. God will remind every fallen sinner that's standing in the highest of the galaxy that every indictment brought against you will be 100% fact and 100% truth. The second reason why that throne is white, Brother Mike, and this is where the disturbing reunion comes in. Those of us that are saved by the grace of God when we go to heaven, the Word of God declares that we will be clothed in robes of white signifying the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ that made us capable of inheriting the glory world. On that day, Pastor Baker, that throne will be totally surrounded by the saints of God. Every redeemed, born-again child of God will be at this day of judgment. But we're gathered around the throne because we are not there to be judged. Our judgment had already taken place in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, chapter 5, verse 10, to give an account for the things done in our body, whether it be good or whether it be bad. We've already been through the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ. We've given account for what we've done since we've been saved. And we're gathered around the throne of God, and just beyond us, in the third heaven, in the midst of the air, is all of our loved ones, all of our family, all of our friends, and all of our kinfolk. But dividing us on that judgment day is a disturbing banister that God has set up. I hope you've never been to court, but if you've ever been inside a courtroom, you know there's a banister that goes across the courtroom. That banister separates those that are being indicted from those that are there to just witness what's going on. On one side of this banister in the glory world are the saints of God around the great white throne. We are on the witness side. We are on the throne side. But just on the other side of the banister is all of our loved ones and friends that have died without the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it's a family reunion, but we cannot talk to them. We cannot hug them. We cannot share our hearts with them. We cannot embrace them. They're on trial. We must stay behind the banister and watch every one of those that we have known and loved give an account for the things they have done, whether it be good or bad, as they stand in the highest of the galaxies before the Lord Jesus himself. You talk about a day of judgment, brother. You think about all the billions of people that's going to be throughout the heavens. There are six billion people living upon the face of this earth right now while I'm preaching. Six billion. But on that resurrection morning when all humanity, from Adam and Eve to the last baby that was ever born, meets God in the third heavens, whether to be a witness or whether to be on trial, Ladies and gentlemen, as you gaze out across the habitation of God, all you're going to see is an endless ocean of lost sinners that are going to stand before the great white throne. Number three, I want to talk about the reason for this day. The Bible tells us that the Father has committed all judgment unto the Son. They're standing before the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It's not the Pope. It's not Mother Mary. God knows it's not Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, or Bill Clinton. No. Seated on that throne. Thank you, Democrats. He's all by himself. 
And he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now I've got a question. Why is God judging them if they've already died lost? He's judging them according to their works. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of works. Now I want to ask you, why is God judging them according to works? You're not saved by your works anyway. For by grace are you saved, not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So why would God take the time to let every lost sinner that's ever died without Christ bring their soul out of hell, their body out of the dust of the earth, bring them into heaven, let them see God and all the glory that they're missing, and then line them up with a book that contains all their works? Why? They're lost anyway. I'll tell you why. Because when a sinner goes to hell tonight without Jesus, as far as I know, everybody burning in hell is suffering the same degree of punishment. I can't show you a verse of scripture anywhere where anybody is suffering any more or any less than anybody else in hell. Whether they never heard the gospel or whether they heard it all their life, as far as I know, hell's a place of out of darkness where they're all suffering the same pain and damnation of God. But just like God will reward us and there will be different standings during the millennial reign, so it will be in the lake of fire where he's about to put them forever. Here's why the book of works is there, Brother Aaron. Every time you've heard the gospel in your life, God's got a record of it. And he turns the thermostat up. Every time the Holy Spirit's ever dealt with you in a meeting like he's doing right now and you've rejected Christ, God's got a record of it, honey and he's going to turn the thermostat up. Every time you walk by a coffee table and you see a Bible somewhere, God turns the thermostat up. Every time you're flicking through a radio station and you hear somebody on the radio preaching, God turns the thermostat up. Every time you've laid in bed and said, man, I don't want to go to hell. This thing's bothering me. God turns the thermostat up. Every time the memory of God crosses your mind, God turns the thermostat up. Every time you think about being raised in church and singing deep and wide in Sunday school when you was a little kid, God turns the thermostat up. And I'm going to tell you, the lake of fire is going to be awful hot for a bunch of Baptists that has sat in church their entire life and heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus and was never really saved by the grace of God. God's got a record of every time you ever turned his son down, every time you ever walked out of the church without Christ. God's got a record of it. And he's bringing you up out of hell, reuniting your body and your soul together. And he's going to tell you exactly how much punishment you're going to suffer in a lake of fire forever and forever. The Bible says that another book is open besides the book of works. And it's called the book of life. Now why is the book of life there? Inside the book of life contains the names of every individual that's ever been washed in the blood of Jesus. Why does God have the book of life? He's judging people that their name's not in it. Why is it even there? You say, well, maybe he's going to flick through it just to make sure. Let me tell you what John said. John said he knew every name that was in it before the foundation of the world was ever laid. Jesus don't have the book there lest he forgot and got somebody mixed up. I'm going to tell you why he's got the book of life there. Because after he pronounces you're lost and doomed and damned, Some of you that thought you were really saved are going to fall on your knees and say, now, wait a minute. There's been a mistake. I repeated a prayer one time. I shook a preacher's hand. I got baptized. I joined the church. I started reading my Bible. I started going to the house of God. I raised my kids in Sunday school. I'm going to tell you, Lord, there's been a big mistake. You don't understand. I'm supposed to be over there in a robe of white. I, 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 don't, I don't know why I'm over here. You, you've got to look this thing over again. There's been some kind of problem. And only out of courtesy of honest judgment, God's going to say, here's the book. Search the book again. And you're going to find out the gruesome reality, honey. It's not that your name was ever scratched out. It was never there. I'm going to tell you, Brother Jonathan Mixon, there's going to be a lot of people on this day of judgment that thought they were ready to meet God. 
thought they were saved, hoped they were saved, trying to be saved, hoping the good outweighs the bad. You're wasting your time, buddy. If you're trusting anything except the shed blood of Jesus to get you to heaven, you're going to fry like a sausage in hell one of these days. I tell you, Jesus is the only individual that his blood and his resurrection that will keep you out of the flames of the damned forever and forever. And some of you know just enough about God and religion to dilute your mind, warp your understanding, and send you straight to hell thinking you're right with God. Some of you used to sit in services like this and your heart would beat out of your chest, your hands would sweat. You'd say, my God, i got to get out of here. I can't breathe. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. You remember when it bothered you? You remember when it upset you? Look at you now, buddy. You've got so used to being around it, it doesn't even bother you anymore. And now you've warped your mind to thinking that maybe somewhere years ago, maybe you said a little something and God saved you. Conviction's gone. Enlightenment's gone. Opportunity is gone. And one day to great white throne judgment when God pronounces judgment on you you're going to say oh God please search the book again the reason for judgment is to determine your amount of damnation number four the point I want to get to I want to show you the record of their departure Jesus said in the book of Matthew, Brother Jones, he will say to them on that day, Depart from me, you cursed. I never knew you. And then right after that, here's what Jesus says to the angels of God. Bind them hand and foot. Bind them hand and foot. Why is he having to bind them hand and foot? Because the angel of God has walked over to that pit and opened the mouth of the lake of fire. And that boiling ocean of lava has just burped out its first testimony of flames and smoke. And those sinners realize, oh my God, he didn't bring me out of hell because he's changed his mind. He only brought me out of hell to judge me and send me to a lake of fire. They're going to fall on their knee. Oh, yes, you're going to have another chance to call on God after you're dead. But he's not going to respond. Because he's not there to save you, honey. He's there to judge you. He's your attorney tonight, and he'll be your judge in Revelation chapter number 20. And God, you're not going to burn in hell forever. He's going to bring you out of hell and judge you. You'll get to see your family again, but you'll be separated by the banister of God. You'll have a chance to call on Christ. The Bible said in the book of Philippians, and at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things of heaven and things earth and things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the earth. Hey, you know what's going to happen? That ocean of people is going to start falling down on their bellies across the heavens, and they're going to say, God, save me. I want to be saved. I don't want to go to the lake of fire. I want you to save me. I want to be born again. And when they realize... There's no chance. They're going to do what every one of us would do. They're going to run and hide. And that's why God let heaven flee to one corner of the galaxy and earth flee to the other. And was, there was found no place for them. There's going to be no place for you to hide. God will disband that large army of angels. And they're going to come down and they're going to take every sinner, every man, every boy and girl, every mom, every dad, every grandparent, all of us that are redeemed. We're standing around the throne. Brother Jonathan, tears are running down our eyes. We're looking at the people that we love. We're looking at our own flesh and blood. And they're about to be thrown in the fire. And this ain't goodbye for a year, son. Saying goodbye for a lifetime. It's goodbye forever. The sadness of their departure, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Can you imagine untold billions of people screaming at the top of their lungs? Oh, God, have mercy on me. I want to be saved. I don't want to go to the lake of fire. Oh, God. And they're bound hand and foot. As 
the sadness of their departure. The separation of their departure, Brother Baker. And by the way, this is why God doesn't wipe all tears from our eyes until Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4. God's got them bound hand and foot. They're standing in the highest of the galaxies. I've got to hurry and close. The mouth of that pit is opened up. The angel of God has picked them up. And you're looking at your daddy. Whether a man's innocent or guilty, God, the court, always asked them, is there anything you'd like to say before you leave? Here's a man bound hand and foot. And on the other side of the rails, his wife and his kids and his grandkids. Sir, is there anything you'd like to say before you leave? Yes, Lord. I'd like to tell my wife that I sure do love her. And I'd like to tell my children, if Dad had it to do all over again, how to went to church with you every time you asked me to go. But it's too late now. And there's no hope. And I want to tell them all that I love them and I love you forever. <laughs> Goodbye, son. I got to go now. And the last thing that family sees is the angel of God. The Bible said they are cast. That means they are thrown. And they'll watch that angel throw their daddy in that burning lava of ocean of lava and fire and smoke. And the last thing they'll hear is their daddy yell, Oh my God! No! He's gone forever. A teenage boy approaches the throne and he's shaking and he's scared and he's bound hand and foot. Son, anything you'd like to say? Yes, Lord. I want to thank my daddy for always being there. And I want to tell my mom I'm so sorry for all the times I made you cry. And mama, if I had this thing to do over, I'd have got saved a long, long time ago. I love you, mommy. Oh, God, no! The heavens will swell with the bursting tears of the damned as they're thrown into a bottomless pit, body and soul, to burn forever and forever. Years ago, I was speaking to a judge in our county seat, and he said, Preacher, I know you don't understand everything about being a judge, but I want you to come and sit on my bench with me one day. I want you to see what we go through so you could better pray for me. But he said, Now, you're not allowed to say anything. I know you want to kill everybody and hang folks, and, but he said, You can't say that. You've you, you got to be quiet. And I thought I'd seen rough stuff in my life. But I saw something that day, Brother Lane, that kept me up for a week. They brought in a little old skinny white girl tattooed from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, it looked like. And three black guys come in and sat down with her. And the DA called her up to the stand. And they went through the preliminaries of the trial. And the DA said, ma'am, could you tell me, do you have any children? She said, yes, I have three. They're nine and seven and two and a half. He said, that's right. He said, would you tell the judge where your husband is? She said, yes, he's serving long-term prison, three strikes for drug addiction. He said, would you tell uh, the judge, do you have a drug problem? She said, oh, yes, I, I, I'm a junkie. He said, would you tell the judge why these three black men are here with you? She said, these, these are the men I live with. He said, would you tell the judge where your three little children, nine, seven, and two and a half, where do they live? She said, they live in the house with me and these three men. And you're all junkies. Yes, yes sir. We're, we're dope at it. He said, ma'am, on such and such a day, we got a phone call that uh, three little kids were out in the neighborhood at about 1130 at night. No parental supervision. We sent the police out there and we found your three sons out on the street at 1130 at night. And she said, yes, sir, those were mine. 
He said, would you tell the judge why you wasn't there with your children? She said, I was in jail. We got pulled over by the police and stopped, and we had drugs in our vehicle, and they arrested us, so we were in jail. He said, ma'am, who was taking care of your three boys while you were two and a half years old? Who's taking care of your three boys while you're in jail? And she said, nobody, sir. Down in the projects in an apartment complex. He said, ma'am, who fed your children while you were in jail over the weekend? She said, nobody, sir. He said, ma'am, if one of your children would have got sick, who would have took them to the hospital? If they would have choked? She said, nobody. They, they would have died. And about that time, Brother Baker, of course, I'm sitting over here, and I'm telling you, I'm about to kill everybody. I'm, my blood's boiling. About that time, the social worker came in with three little boys, set them on the back row, cutest little fellas. And it was hers. And they didn't know what I was going on. And she set them three little boys down and, and the trial was going on. And he said, ma'am, the judge broke down and said, Preacher, do you see what I have to deal with every day? And he broke down and he told the DA, he said, look, this is enough. I, I, I can't handle this. He said, ma'am, because of your lifestyle and your addiction and your neglect, you leave the state of Mississippi no alternative but to take your children and that nine-year-old boy realized what was going on in that courtroom. And I heard him say, you're not taking me from my mama. She's all I got. And I watched the DA's lip begin to quiver. Nobody knew what to say. And he grabbed the social worker, the lady that brought him in. He said, hey, you tell that man up there, he can't take me from my mama. I love my mama. I don't want to leave my mama. I want to go home. And she said, son, be quiet. You, you can't say that. And about that time, I looked, and that seven-year-old just broke down, weeping out loud. I want my mama. Don't take me from my mama. And he was leaning over, hugging on that little two-and-a-half-year-old boy. God, mercy, I thought I'd die. I looked, the judge was weeping, and the DA was weeping, and I was weeping. And, and Brother Lyons, all the social workers were weeping. And, and the judge stopped the trial and said, stop it. Stop it. He said, this is why I'm about to go crazy. i got to listen to these kids every day when nobody wants them. And he said, ma'am, get those kids out of this courtroom. I, I can't have this going on in here. Get them out of here. Brother James, she got them up, and they were all yelling, but I want Baba. That, that's my Baba sitting over there. I want to go be with my Baba. And she said, okay, just a minute. Let's step outside. Brother, it wasn't two minutes later. One of the office clerks come running in and said, your honor, I've never... I've never done this in my life. But them three boys are crying so loud down there in the, in the lobby that the whole courthouse is weeping with them. I don't know what to do with them. Did you hear the echo all down through the hallways? I want my mama! He told the DA, he said, go get them boys. Get up! I'm weeping. Talk about my little old kids. They brought them three little boys in and he said, ma'am, I'm going to tell you something. There is no way the state of Mississippi is letting you take them three boys home living like this with these junkies. It ain't happening. So I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to go back here and tell them goodbye. Because this is it. I ain't living another day like this. And brother, she stood up from that witness stand. I'll never forget it. God have mercy in the morning, Brother Dustin. When she come through that banister and opened them doors, that social worker let go of them three little fellers. Here they come, running down that aisle, tears are busting down their face. And right before they got to the mama, she just fell to her knees, collapsed, broke, weeping. And that nine-year-old, he ran right into the front of her, and the seven-year-old got on one side. Now, little two-and-a-half was jumping up, trying to, whew, man, have mercy. And I heard the nine-year-old say to his mama, Mama, you tell that man up there, and I don't care if we have to stay at night by ourselves. I can do that. And I'll learn how to cook for the other boys. Now, I'll make sure we're taken care of, and we won't run the streets no more at night, but I love you, Mom, and you're all I got. You can't let him take me from you. Mom, you tell him, we'll make it work. We can do it. We, we, I'll make whatever we got to do, Mama. I'm going to do it, but don't make me leave. Two policemen came in. Grabbed them three little boys, and I'm going to tell you something, honey. I thought I'd heard weeping in my life. 
I really thought I'd had. Nothing like that. I sat on the side of my bed night after night, and my wife would say, honey, what's wrong with you? And I'd say, honey, all I can hear is them boys. I never heard such screaming in all of my life, Brother Jones, as they peeled those three little boys off that mama. She collapsed weeping, and that boy was yelling, Get me back to my mama! You can't take my mama! Don't separate me from my mama! Could it be that on Judgment Day, just before Dad's thrown into the lake of fire, that God would stop long enough to say to the family, I want you to hug him one more time, but then he's got to go. Can you imagine hugging your daddy for the last time forever? No more dad. Could you imagine hugging your husband or wife for the last time? Could you imagine having to say goodbye to your son and daughter knowing that throughout all the eons of time you will never, never, never be in their presence again? And on both sides of the banister, people are weeping and screaming and crying as the vast number of the wicked damned are cast alive in the lake of fire and their screams fill the air and heaven is flowed with tears as families are separated forever! Oh, yeah. Everybody gets to go to heaven. But not everybody gets to stay. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Spirit of God, while the piano player is coming, my heart is so heavy tonight. There's some daddy here tonight that don't know God. Some lost mama, some teenager, those of us that are saved, tears ought to be running down our face when we think about our loved ones that are not and one day when we'll have to be separated forever. Oh God, if we're going to have a burden and we're going to cry, help us to do it now. It'll be too late on that day. God save our daddies, our mamas, our brothers, our sisters, our sons, our daughters, our grandparents, nieces, cousins, aunts, uncles, friends, people we work with. Oh God! Give us a burden that will change our lives. You weep, honey, weep out loud. Listen to people weeping out loud. That's right, honey, come on, Jesus will save you tonight. Oh, what a great day of judgment. Don't miss it, Daddy. Don't miss it, Mama. That's right, honey, come on. Jesus will save you. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, Baba. Goodbye, husband. Goodbye, wife. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, daughter. Are you going to miss it, son? Woo! Are you going to miss it? Are you going to miss it? I wonder tonight while our heads are bowed, these altars are already packed and filled. People are weeping all over the building. Listen to me. I'm not going to embarrass you. I've never done that in my life, but you better listen to me. I wonder tonight while every head's bowed, nobody's looking but this country preacher. I'm having a word of prayer and I'm leaving because if you want to go to hell, son, I can't stop you. But right now, while every head's bowed, I wonder how many would say, Brother Kid, right now. What about it, Dad? You're going to be man enough to step up to the plate and say, I'm lost. If you're here tonight and you don't know God, right now in my closing prayer, you say, Brother Kid, I'm not saved, but I don't want to go to hell. God knows my heart. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to miss it. I want to get right with God tonight. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it, Brother Kid. I want Jesus Christ to save me tonight. That's right, son. Get that preacher. There you go. He'll take the word of God and lead you to Jesus, son. You're a fine young man under conviction. Brother kid, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell! Oh, God! I don't want to live without God! I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to miss my family. I don't want to miss the glory world. I'm lost! I'm lost! Are you listening to me, honey? If you're here tonight and you're lost, I've got people standing here with a Bible that'll help you. 
would you take a step out of your seat and say, I want to know Jesus Christ as my Savior right now. I want to receive the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus right now as my own personal redemption. I want to receive Him as my Savior right now. Would you get out of your seat right now? People will let you out of the way. Come on. Take one step. Now listen to me, son. You mean going to heaven's not worth taking one step out of your seat? You mean, lady, you won't give God one step of your life to make your way to this altar? If you'll take one step, son, and God don't make it easy, I'll let you go back to your seat. That's right, son. Come on. That's right, son. Your papa. That's right. That's right. God have mercy. Don't die without God, son. Come on, let me pray with you. Ma'am, my tears are running down your face. Hey, why don't you grab the person next to you and say, come pray with me. I'm not saved. Come on, son, we'll pray with you. I'm not saved, brother kid. That's right, son. God bless you, boy. Preacher leading to Christ. Brother Kevin, come help me, please. Brother Tony, that's right, pray with him, son. Come on, others need to be saved tonight. I'm not asking if you go to church, a good person. I'm not asking if you got a good family. I want you to know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. I just want you to know you're saved. I want to stroll all over heaven with you some glad day. God bless you, young man. Brother Kevin, would you pray with that boy right there? Others are coming. Anybody else? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Everybody gets to go to heaven. But some of you are not going to get to stay. Is there anybody else? Quit hiding behind the people around you and in front of you. Look up and face your reality with God that you need Jesus. Step out of your seat. Let us take a Bible and help you. Come on, Daddy. Why would you go to hell? Why would you go to hell? I read a statistic some time ago in a Christian magazine. Listen to me. It says that if a mom and dad dies without God, there's a 92% chance they'll take their children to hell with them. 92% chance that you're not only going to go to hell, Daddy, but you're going to take your family to hell with you. That's right, sir. Look at the tears running down that man's face, preacher. God bless you. Come to Christ, sir. Come on, we'll take the Bible, preacher. He may need somebody to pray with him. That's right. Come on, son. We'll lead you to Christ. All you have to do is come. You say, I don't know how to get saved. I don't even know. That's why we're standing here with the Bible, son. If you want to get saved, we'll take the Bible. Honey, it won't take 45 seconds. We can take the Word of God. We got some men and women here. They know what they're doing. They can show you how to receive Christ as your Savior. Is there anybody else? Brother kid, I should have come tonight. Several have come to receive the Lord Jesus. Is there another? Oh, yeah. You're going to get to go to heaven. You're just not going to get to stay there. Oh, yeah, you're going to get out of hell, but it's only to be cast into the lake of fire. Oh, yeah, you're going to see your family, but you'll have to say goodbye. And, oh, yes, you'll call on Jesus, but he's not going to hear your plea. Is there anybody else, brother, kid? More than anything in the world, I want to know that I'm saved tonight. Amen, brother. Amen. That's right, son. I want him to stand up here with us, Brother Baker. That's right. Sister, do you know the old hymn, Just As I Am? Would you play a verse of that for me? I feel like we need to, everybody probably, just about everybody knows that song, Just As I Am. Here's the way I want to do the invitation tonight. God bless that young man. Whew. Amen, son. Glory. Amen. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Woo! Bless his name, thank God. Hallelujah. Yes, son, glory to God. I want, to, I want you to sing with me the first verse of Just As I Am in just a moment. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you close the invitation. I preached about five minutes over tonight. Forgive me. But I tell you, there's others here that need to come. I'm going to tell you something, buddy. It's been a long time since God's rung your bell like this. And he may never do it again. And don't you ever forget I said that to you. If you can't get saved in an atmosphere like this, I'll be honest, brother mine. I don't know if you ever will. So I'm going to sing, and I want you to sing with me. One verse of just as I am. If you don't come on this verse, you're telling me by not coming. I tell you what, I, I'll go to hell if I want to. And you know what? That's right. If you really want to go to hell, I'll let you go. But we're going to sing one verse just for you that are being dealt with right now. That's all this is for, just for those that need to come. Let's sing that first verse. Here we go. Just as 
I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed. Are you coming? If, you're going, if you can come, you better come right now. If God will give you the strength to come, you better come. Are you going to come? You're closing the invitation, buddy, not me. Anybody? Are you coming? You better come right now. Preacher Baker, I'm through. Just play softly, sister. Woo! Blessed God. Amen. Amen. This is Chandler. Chandler first one came and said, Preacher, I, I, I got to get saved. <laughs> now, when the under conviction, you don't, of course, he's been in church, and I said, That's right. All you got to do is pray and ask God to save That's you. That's exactly right. Said, you just pray it. I can't put words in your mouth. Good, and so he prayed. And Woo! Now, the prayer's not what saved him, it's what's in his heart. Amen. So, amen. Well, I, he was standing right here, looked over here, and here come his, here come his brother. Is that his brother? This is his brother, older brother. Yeah, this is Tyler. Amen. Tyler came down through here. Wow. Woo. Now, he didn't know he got it. So here's, he got Woo. it. So. Ain't that a blessing? Glory! Amen, amen. <laughs> then Brother Tony was did him. Brother Douglas' grandson over here. He, he sang. Yeah. And the singer got saved tonight. That's right. Amen, amen brother. Years ago, the preacher's wife got saved. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's a preacher's wife for years. That's she right. Got, so the... Preacher's grandson got saved. The singer got saved. Yes! You don't go to heaven because you sing for Jesus. You go to heaven because of Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Then over here, this is this is Luke. Amen, Luke. And Luke came down. Who'd you come down with, Mark? Mark. Where's Mark at? That's Mark. And Mark got saved a few weeks ago, right? You came with him tonight. What, what can he do tomorrow? First cousin. You believe that man? Now your brothers in Christ. Hey! And so Luke got saved. Amen. Glory! Ain't that wonderful? Amen. I thank God for it. I praise Him for it. That's right, brother. Amen. This is awesome, man. Amen. Glory! <laughs> but there's others that need to be saved. Oh, God bless you, brother. Luke. There's others that need to be I'm saved. Proud of you guys, man. I tell you what, listen to. Let's just bow our heads just for a couple of, just maybe 30, 40 seconds. It's your chance. This is your chance. Think about what that preacher preached. Think about what that preacher preached. And listen, what he preached is going to be reality one day. It just won't be a message. It'll, it'll be reality when you stand before God. Be on the right side. Be able to go to heaven and stay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is for you. Glory. Glory. You could have come, man. I could have helped you if you'd have listened to me. Amen. Well, I don't know what else to do to say this to you. You ain't got to leave lost. No, sir. Never. I hope we're going to dismiss in a few minutes. But you ain't, you, you might get out there and the Spirit of God get you back in here. That's right. And if he does, you, listen, when he leaves you alone, that's it. I'm telling you, I can't if he, help you then. If he's bothering you right now, you need to get in. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Now listen, uh, in a few more.